Hey everybody, welcome back to Tip of the Week. In this week's video, I want to show you some easy ways that you can prepare your photos for print using On One Photo Raw 2018. So to get started here, I'm just going to start in my browse module. And this is where I'm just going to find the photo that I want to print. So I'll just browse through these photos here, and I know that the photo I want to print is this one because it has the edits already applied. So I'll click on that photo here, and I'll just take it into develop. And the reason I take my photo into develop is one, I want to show you guys that I have edits applied. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, you'll see that I applied a unique style to my photo. Also, because inside of develop, you have a nice tool that you can use for printing called soft proofing. To enable soft proofing, simply head down to this icon here with the little check mark next to your preview button, click on it, and that will enable soft proofing. What soft proofing is doing is it's basically simulating what your photo is going to look like if it was printed on paper, hence the white background that shows up around your photo. And now that you have soft proofing enabled onto your photo, there's a few different options you can use that will help you out when preparing your photos to print. For example, if you head up to view and you go down to your profiles, this is where you can choose different color profiles so that you can see what they look like applied to your photo whenever they're printing. So if I wanted to choose a different color profile, I could choose one here, I could import one, or if I have a printer plugged into my computer, most of the time it will automatically import those profiles for you. I'm just going to choose this one so I can see what it looks like on my photo. Another great option is if you go up to your view options, you can select simulate paper and ink. And what this is going to do is it's going to simulate what this photo is going to look like if it were printed on paper and ink. If I'm soft proofing, I generally like to have that option selected because just like in this case, it showed me that my photo is going to be a little too warm. So what I can do is I can just create a virtual copy of this photo by opening up my film strip view mode. I'm just going to hit F on my keyboard. And now I can just head down to that photo. I'll right click it. I'll create a version. Now I'll head back into that photo. So now I'm editing a version of my original photo. I can use this one as my print version so that I can fix that sort of green cast that it's going to look like if it prints. And then if I need to go back and readjust any of the settings on the master copy, I can do that easily. So now that I'm editing the version of my photo that I want to print, I'm just going to go to my temperature settings and I'm going to cool it down quite a bit so that when it prints, it's not as warm as it was showing me. And also another great option whenever you're enabling soft proofing is to head up to view and select gamut warning. And the gamut warning is going to show you all of the colors that aren't going to translate well onto paper. Basically all of these reds in here are showing me those deep dark blacks and deep shadows that the ink from my printer can't replicate. So in the future, if you come across this and you have a lot of these warnings, the great thing about creating that version of your original photo is you can head in and you can readjust the settings over here to compensate for these gamut warnings. So I know that these deep dark blacks and shadows are the ones creating the red. So I can go back and you'll notice that if I pull up on my black slider, it removes some of those warnings because it's removing the colors and those dark shadows that my printer wouldn't be able to replicate. So I'll just go up here and I'll pull up on the shadows a little bit as well. Probably about right there. And now what I can do is just pull down on the exposure a little. And we'll actually just boost the midtones also. And there we go. Now I've created a nice photo that I can use to print with the same style that I've applied. But I've just gone in and adjusted a few settings so that I don't have all of these gamut warnings onto my shot. So now we can head down and turn off our soft proofing. And you'll notice that our photo has a little bit of a blue tint to it. And that's because we're overcompensating for that green look that we were going to have if we were to print our photo. So basically, we just kind of fixed our photo and we have sort of a basic tonality for it. And now we know what the photo is going to look like when it's printed. Now let's head into resize and really edit the printing controls for our photo. And now we're inside of resize. And resize is going to give you everything you need to prep your photo even further for printing. You'll notice right off the bat you have a bunch of different controls in here. 
But for the sake of the video, I just want to show you a few different ways that I like to prepare my photos for print inside of Resize. The first thing I like to do is I like to check my document size. So my document is 13 inches by 9 inches. Well, if I'm going to blow this photo up, I can do that easily because Resize has genuine fractals algorithm that allows me to resize any photo to any resolution without removing any of the quality of that photo. For example, if I want to take this photo and I want to double it in size, I'll usually head over to this document size pane and go down to percent. And you'll notice that it's 100% of my original photo. Well, if I want to double that size, I'll just make this 200. And it'll resize my photo to twice that size. So if I go back into inches, you'll notice that I have this photo that is twice the size of my original. Now, if I click in here, it resized my photo even larger without removing any of the quality and sharpness from that shot. So now let's go back. And keep in mind that if you do change the document size to a different size and enlarge it, keep in mind that you have the settings tab here that allows you to control how your document is resized. I generally just like to head into this image type here, and there's a bunch of different preset options. You have one for portrait or landscape. I generally just like to click general purpose, and that seems to do a good job for whatever photo I'm resizing. But you know, if you do have a, a portrait or a landscape, you can use those options as well. Another thing I really like to add inside of Resize is I like to add sharpening. Sharpening is a great option to add onto your photo, especially when you're preparing it for printing. Because if you took your photo to a print lab and you said, I want to print this photo, they're going to add sharpening onto it before they print it so that when they do print it onto the paper, it comes out nice and sharp and there's a lot of quality to it and you're not losing any of the detail in your photo. So I would recommend adding some sharpness. You can always turn up the amount or turn it down and turn this off to see what it adds onto your photo. So if I turn this on and off, it does a lot to bring back some of those details up here, especially in his hair and his face. So now that we've added some sharpening and we've ensured our photo is going to come out nice and clear with a bunch of detail when we print it, now the last thing I like to do is I like to add a gallery wrap onto my photo. I generally, especially if I'm printing something, I'll add a gallery wrap because most of the time if I'm printing it, I'm going to make it a canvas print. And a few things to keep in mind if you are adding a gallery wrap onto your photo, especially if you have people, you'll notice that I have this type as reflect but I have a person in my photo and other objects, so they're actually reflecting onto the outsides of my page. Well, that can seem a little distracting. So what I want to do is go in here to type and select stretch. And what stretch is going to do is it's actually just going to stretch the content within my frame around the border around it so that when I do put this on a canvas wrap, these areas don't look distracting. So those are a few ways you can prepare your photos for print using On One Photo Raw 2018. Now that we've prepared our photo a little bit and we want to export it, let's head down to the export drawer here, click on it. And now we have a few different options on how we want to export our actual photo. Generally, I like to stick with the JPEG file type. And if I'm going to export it into a certain location, I can choose that here. One thing I usually do though, is I'll click the rename option and let's just remove these here. And the first thing I like to do is I'll just go into current name and then I'll add one and I'll add text and I'll just add Nick, who's the guy in the photo, skate print. So now I know I have my file name, but then at the end I have Nick skate print so that I know that this is the photo that I need to take to the lab if I need to print it. So then if you're ready to go, you can just simply head down to export now. It'll export that photo with the specifications you have applied and it'll export it into the folder that you chose. That's my tip of the week for this week. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more.